Hi there, we're going to go over how to use the assumed mean method to calculate the mean of a grouped data set. Here is the data that we've got. We've got a distribution of daily wages of workers at a factory. And our data has been split into a few groups, a few intervals of daily wages. And in each group, we're told how many workers fit in to that category. Now, as far as calculating a mean by hand goes, these numbers in the intervals are pretty big. Those could be a bit of a pain to calculate by hand. And that's a reason to use the assumed mean method. For calculating a mean by hand, the assumed mean method can sort of simplify the arithmetic that we have to do. This here is the formula for calculating the mean using the assumed mean method. Let's talk about the pieces of this formula. First, the A is the assumed mean. So let's start there. Let's take a guess at what the mean of this data might be. Now, it's an important part of this method that it doesn't matter how wrong your assumption is, you will end up with the correct mean as long as you perform all the steps correctly. But generally speaking, the better our assumed mean is, the simpler these calculations will be to complete by hand. So if we look at our groups of data, we should just pick a central interval. It looks like 140 to 160 is the interval in the middle. So for my assumed mean, I'll just pick the midpoint of this interval, which is 150. So we'll say that our assumed mean a is 150. This is not the correct mean. If it was, then we'd be done. But it doesn't matter that it's wrong. Assuming a mean is going to help us with the calculation. That's the whole key behind this method. This formula tells us that to correct our assumed mean, we just have to add this here. In the denominator of this fraction, we have the sum of the frequencies, and the frequencies were given to us, so we could calculate that right now if we wanted to. In the numerator, we have the sum of frequencies times this thing di. Now, what is di? Well, that brings us to the final thing we need to discuss before we solve the problem. In order to use the assumed mean method, it's probably a good idea to set up a table just to organize all your information. If we fill this out, we'll pretty much be done. You can see that the fi's are the frequencies of each interval, which are given to us. The di's are found by taking xi's and subtracting the assumed mean. That's A, the assumed mean, which we just talked about. The XI's are simply the midpoints of our intervals. Let's go ahead and fill those out. The midpoint of this interval is 110. The midpoint of this interval is 130, and so on. 150, 170, and finally, 190. So those are the XI's, those are the midpoints. Now that we've got the XI's and we've got our assumed mean, we can calculate the DI's. Each DI is just a midpoint minus the assumed mean. So we take 110 and subtract the assumed mean. 110 minus 150 is negative 40. Again, we take the midpoint, 130, and subtract the assumed mean. 130 minus 150 is negative 20. 150 minus the assumed mean of 150 is 0. 170 minus the assumed mean is 20. And 190 minus the assumed mean is 40. We're almost done. Remember, here in the formula, we'll have to sum up all the products fi times di, and that's what we're gonna fill out here in the final column. We need to take each frequency and multiply it by these di differences. So let's do that. First, we have 12 times negative 40, and that's gonna be negative 480. Then we have 14 times negative 20. That's going to be negative 280. Then 8 times 0 is 0. Then we have 6 times 20, which is 120. 
and then we have 10 times 40, which is 400. So those are all the products, F-I-D-I, we'll need to add these up to use in the formula. So now let's plug in all the pieces of the formula to calculate the mean. The first part is the assumed mean, which is 150, and then the second part is the correction, so to speak, that needs to be made to the assumed mean. In the denominator of this correction is the sum of the frequencies. That's just the total number of data points. We already know that's 50. We're told that this was data for 50 workers. So if we add up those frequencies, it's going to be 50. Then in the numerator of this term, we need to put the sum of the products that we just calculated. So we have to add up this whole column. And you might find that easier to do by adding up the negatives and positives correspondingly. So I might start by saying negative 480 plus 400 is negative 80. And then negative 280 plus 120 is negative 160. So to add these up, I need negative 80 plus negative 160, which is negative 200. 40. And what's this equal to? Well, it's 150 minus 240 divided by 50. 240 divided by 50 is 4.8. And so our final answer for the mean using the assumed mean method is 150 minus 4.8, which is 145.2. Two. And that is the mean of the grouped data. I encourage you to try picking a different assumed mean and going through this process again to see if you get the same number, 145.2. You should. And if you do, you'll know that you performed all of the steps correctly. If we had chosen a really inaccurate assumed mean, like a thousand, for example, then these DI differences would all be bigger, making the whole process more difficult to do by hand or to calculate in our heads. So that's why you want to try to pick a good mean but it's always going to work out as long as you do the calculations correctly. Hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and I'll see you next time. I've been biblical, holy on the mic like an apostle. Cyclical hymns hit like history's rooms in a fossil. Daddy was cynical, he was words, now I'm critical. Thinking Bible verses might have all been an admissible, invisible, ethereal ghost. Kissing in my visual see, past in love with these pivotal pinnacles. Virgin Isaac was a symbol. Show me that I could live it up, giving up love.